Do you mind if I use your bathroom for a couple days? <laughs> for a really long time. <laughs> Can I sleep in your bathroom? Awkward mammals do not tap the glass. If you do, we'll just ask you kindly not to do it again. Yeah, there's a sign. Yeah. It says on the logo, idiots. It's not, yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, today we're going to be talking about the never-ending topic, at least for me, of boy bands. Um, But first we have um, a little segment um, called On This Day in History and On This Day in Future. Um, Did you know, Benton, On This Day in History um, in 1814... Uh, Napoleon was uh, exiled after uh, failing to unite Europe under his rule. Interesting. I knew that he was exiled, but I did not know why. So he was exiled because he failed to unite Europe. Yes, yes. So on this day in history, Napoleon was exiled. But on this day in future, May 11th, 2020... You mean uh, April 11th. Or excuse me, April 11th. Yes, excuse (laughs) me, I'm sick. Uh, Tide introduces edible pods uh, in Mexico as testing uh, with uh, horchata orchard and carne asada meadow. So... Sounds delicious. I'm excited. Let's, What's your favorite boy band? Let's talk. Uh, let's talk boy bands. Um, I'd, <laughs> I'd say currently my favorite boy band. Wow. Let's. I'm just gonna go through a list of ones I like because I don't know if I can just pick one right off right now because there are too many to choose from. Let's see. I listen to the, of course, the Backstreet Boys. Correct. NSYNC. Mm-hmm. Dream Street. Dream Street. Yeah, didn't expect Jesse you to Mac- know that one. Yeah, Jesse McCartney, dude. I, I used Chris to Trousdale, to, Jesse McCartney. I used to listen to their album uh, a lot when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, um, then I listened to BB Mac. I listened to. Oh Jer- my gosh, Jer- I adore BB Mac. <laughs> Jericho Road a little bit here and there. Uh, I've listened. There are only like maybe one or two songs by One Direction that I like. Uh, as far uh, I'll I be forgive totally you. honest. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be singing that a lot tonight. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, but no, Benton is... Um, <laughs> we call me Signore and Don Dakota after this. <laughs> How come you don't like One Direction? Kiss my ring. You come to my house on my daughter's wedding and tell me you don't like One Direction. <laughs> you come to me when I have my Nile horn shut on and you tell me. I don't like One Direction. I mean, and I'm sure if you probably spat maybe a couple more, like, really popular boy band names, they'll be like, yeah, I've heard of them, or no, I haven't. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, Jericho wrote, I don't even think I've heard of them. Jer- that, that name sounds vaguely familiar. They're but. old. They're Well, they're a lot older. Um, let's see. Uh, 18. They're not necessarily boy bands, nah, but they were but pop. Yeah, in that band. same... Pop same lumping, band. yeah. Early two thousands, late nineteen nineties. Gotcha. Yeah, you need to raid my nineties pop collection one day and just see what tickles your fancy. So I've got. A bunch I of think stuff if it there. tries to tickle my fancy, I'll go limp. <laughs> <laughs> they make a pill for that. <laughs> well, it's called Vicodin. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> oh boy. So, um. I want to, you know, Benton's uh, humored me and allowed me to talk about this. So what interests me is the origins. Um, I, I've kind of like, you know, because boy bands are something I'm not going to say. It. Sons of Provo. <laughs> please. Anyway. <laughs> please. I guess parody, parody bands count. Um, <laughs> so uh, that reminds me, I have to show you. I did a music video for Sweet Spirit. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So like doing like um, a lineage or a line of authority, I guess you could say. Uh, for boy bands kind of tracing the roots and I think for me the earliest roots that I can kind of gather as how you know the descendants came dates back to the doo-wop era uh, late 40s through the early 60s the Harley yeah. group so like the Five Satins the Chantels the Cress you know um, Frankie Valley, Frankie you know um, Lemon and the Teenagers or Lemon however you say it um, so I think that's kind of the beginning origins of it granted these were usually older guys not really boy bands per se but stuff right. like that and then rolling into the, the Motown sound the Temptations and Enchantment the Bee Gees. Uh, yeah, yeah things like that I can so, get behind that Yeah. so I think that was kind of the beginning process of it really teen pop kind of becoming a thing um, in the 50s and then I guess you could say at least me personally I, um, I kind of attribute I guess two things to that and one is the continuing of the R&B groups uh, like we mentioned earlier those continued in the 70s 
like the stylistics and stuff. But then you also had more of the family bands like Jackson 5 and the Partridges and uh, the Osmonds, which were very, I mean, I guess technically they consider Jackson 5 a boy band. I don't know if I would, but that's the early inception of, you know, five younger, talented, good-looking guys singing and dancing on stage. They were all boys, the Jackson 5? Yes, the Jackson 5 were. The other ones I, okay. I mentioned, I don't think Because I know the lead singer was Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael, yeah. Tito, and then yeah. the other non-famous ones now. So, who cares? Okay. Who cares? Um, so, yeah. So, we have that as beginning, and then rolling into the 80s, uh, New Edition and New Kids on the Block kind of set it off. And That's right, New Kids. Yeah, yeah. and um, when the 90s, uh, when the Euro dance. In the or the dance music in Europe hit in the early '90s. That's kind of when it just because you had it's bands like Caught in the Act and Boyzone and yeah. uh, Worlds Apart, and then we started imitating that, and then Louis Perlman started imitating that specifically, getting Backstreet Boys, getting in sync, and then I think that's when, when we think boy band, that's what is, um, I guess the. The poster children are Backstreet, NSYNC, O Town, Dream Street, stuff like that. The oh, late yeah. '90s stuff. So, I think it's amazing that um, boy, uh, you know, some boy bands like I mean, you know, Backstreet Boys have lasted such a long time. Now they've had breaks in between their Correct. musical music Correct. career, but like one of their more uh, one of their later song, latest uh, songs in like the past couple of years that I really, really love. Oh my gosh, it warms my heart. It's called "God, Your Mom, uh, Your Mama, and Me," and they did it with the Florida Georgia Line. I forgive you. I forgive you. Two. <laughs> I'm keeping a track. Let's check the board. Two. <laughs> After tonight, I'm gonna get a tally. I'm gonna get tally marks tattooed on my left shoulder of how many times he said "I forgive you" tonight and yeah. meant it. Um. So. Well, do I hate Florida Georgia Line? But okay. No, so, no. That's. I mean, that's good. That's me good. too. But. But. <laughs> I heard this and I was like, I like this song a lot. In fact, I'd be willing to say that I love this song. Okay, that's fine. Um, it's. And but the fact that it was uh, paired up with the Backstreet Boys as well, I'm like, oh, I've got my nostalgia. I've got the hopeless romantic in me. I've got a little bit of the. I can I can tolerate country because I work with it. I work around it. And but outside of work, I don't really. I mean, most oh, I people ad- would, I adore it. Most people would say that you know that's not even really country because it's you know, not when they yeah it's not yeah you it's know, not it's it's, it's neo yeah. country. But, um, yeah. It's yeah, neo country. I can yeah. I can I can definitely tolerate neo country a lot more than I think older country. Okay, fair. That's fair. Um, but that's a whole other. Anyway, topic sorry. Yeah. Itself. yeah, sorry. No, anyway, so um, the other I, I so that's kind of the origins of it, and of course, um, it's extended into modern day. Um, you know, it kind of died out. I, I would say I think the final stake in the heart was two thousand three, two thousand four, and then that's when. More so, um, crunk and snap hip hop, and also um, mm-hmm. more alternative emo rock kind of took the place as the main genres of music. So that is, true. and we saw more shift on solo artists too. So we got instead of you know Backstreet Boys, we had Ryan Cabrera and Clay Aiken and Kelly Clarkson and stuff like that. So. I mean, Justin Timberlake had uh, had <coughs> started his solo career as a musician around like I, don't know, I want to say 2005, 2002, 2002. Okay, yeah. so okay, so that's when that first album came out. Okay, yeah, yeah so justified. Believe, yeah, justified. Yeah. So that is a good record, but he is a he is an he's an apostate. Anywho, I like uh, his music. I just don't like the way he left. But sure enough. anyway, uh, anyone who wants to read that book, uh, Lance Bass, Out of Sync, the memoirs, it's a very good book. Uh, oh, okay, Lance. Yeah, yeah. Quick yeah. read. It's like 120 pages. Real easy. Um, I thought for a moment you were going to say 120 words. <laughs> <laughs> Justin left, and I hate him. The end. <laughs> My editor loved it. <laughs> yeah. Get it out of my face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> goodness gracious. But anyway, so let's talk about... Um, this is an interesting one. This is a question I get asked a lot, being the um, aficionado of uh, boy bands. But what is the criteria for a boy band? Okay. Um, and to me, I, I mean, I say boy band just to kind of paint a picture for people not familiar but I really don't like that term. Like, to me, like, if you're a group of musicians, you're a band. It's not, you know, you're a boy band. Um, I do believe the voice is an instrument because you have to take care of it. You have to use it regularly. So Mm -hmm. it it is what it is. Yeah, the voice is an instrument, yeah. Um, I think the criteria is... mm, It's hard to say. I would would suggest something perhaps along the lines of uh, following modern pop styles. 
Correct. Which are well, which are modern to the time, or, which, yeah, uh, around yeah. a very, which are very close to as close to contemporary as possible. Uh, <sighs> there are typically four to five in in um, in Korean boy bands that are like easily sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Uh, so that shows a little bit of different criteria, I guess, based on the country and stuff. But usually, you know, there's a synchronized. Uh, there's syn- a lot of synchronization in choreography for Correct. dancing as well as singing and lots of harmonizing. Uh, there's lots of, uh, you know, ba- uh, I guess, you know, backup vocals, and they're taking turns switching for lead. Correct. Uh, so I, I'd say those are some definitely key elements Correct. and uh, some uh, big trends with boy bands. No, I would agree with you, and, and the reason I put the question on the docket is because mm-hmm. it's interesting with the perception of if you take four younger clean-cut guys who are musically talented and they're singing and dancing, then it's a boy band, but if you stick instruments in their hands, it becomes a band. Um, that's, true. that's the perception. Like five seconds of summer and the Vamps are looked at as pop rock groups, while you know One Direction is looked at as a boy band, just because they're not having a drum kit or a bass guitar with them on stage. You know, their band is, but um, but so and I mean, and that's I guess like a different fringe type. Like for me, I don't really consider BB Mac a boy band, but they definitely fall into that category category of if you enjoy all this other stuff, you will probably enjoy them too. Which right. that's one of my biggest musical influences is them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I agree with you, is the switching off um, vocal, you know, vocalist, which is not always a thing. With Big them. time rush. What about them? Boy band. That's you like? Yeah. Oh, okay, no, I like them too. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Um, anyway. I would say maybe, I don't know, there's always the different personas, there's always like the bad boy, the shy one, you know, what have you. And there were a lot that, I mean, you guys don't realize, there were a ton, a ton um, I could sit and spout and name some offhand, but we have a, um, I have a boy band March Madness bracket that I filled out last month, and I started with the biggest bracket I could find possible, which begins with 64, and I'm, a lot of you are thinking there is, there's not 64 boy bands. Yes, there is, and I left some off. There have to be. Yeah. There, I mean, if you just, you know, do your history. Some of them just had one album or one EP and didn't make it, but yeah. So I won't bore you. We won't go through all 64, but we'll go to the final 16 that made it, okay? So, um, on one side, I guess conference you could call it, you have One Direction, mm-hmm. O-Town, Boyz to Men, True Vibe, Plus One, BB Mac, New Edition, and Backstreet Boys on one side. Mm-hmm. Now, on the other side, you have B2K. Before you exit, nine one one. Next town down. Why don't we? Ninety eight degrees. Color me bad and guy. So those were the final sixteen. Interesting. So it eventually got down to the final four. Um, Benton, which was B two K, One Direction, uh, or it was B two K versus ninety eight degrees, and One Direction versus Backstreet Boys. So Ooh. so if you had to, let's let's just put you in the final four. Who are your choices for as far as B2K versus 98 Degrees? Who you got there? My four? Yeah, like uh, on, on this one. I mean... For my own I personal mean, docket, I'd do, of course, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Um, as like the final two? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hands down. Gotcha. But who would win on uh, on that? I think Backstreet Boys, not, uh, because um, I can relate to more of their songs. I can sing along more with them, and they've been around a lot longer. I, I have more reasons to it. I have um, affection for uh, the uh, NSYNC's music and yeah, stuff like that. Absolutely, but um, but I think uh, you know, just Backstreet Boys were just like so freaking popular, <laughs> and still like tour around the world and stuff. They you know, do. Like, they have yeah, their show in Vegas, and they have their cruise every year. So. Yeah, it's like they, you know, they do. Um, they're just they're relevant still, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, I'd, but mostly just because I, I mean, you know, nostalgia. I yeah. think probably you know. No, I think I, I mean Backstreet Boys ended up winning. Um, yeah, I definitely think In Sync, as far as like harmonization, maybe had a leg up. Um, oh, but if you're yeah. talking individual vocalists and like contributions, right? Um, In Sync had good harmonization. Backstreet Backstreet um, takes the cake. I love boy bands because I love harmonies, and I'm a very like sappy person, so it's the oh. perfect thing for me, really. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like uh, I think one of my favorites uh, by In Sync was uh, I Thought She Knew. And they all start off in the beginning uh, and just like go through and it's all a cappella, you know. It's so sappy, but in the best way. In the literally best way you possibly can imagine. Don't sing it. Don't sing it. Don't sing it. That's my favorite track on that album. Such a good song. It's a great song. I have to show you some 98 Degrees. But yeah, so for me it came down the final two were 98 Degrees and Backstreet Boys. Okay. Um, 
both of which are fantastic. 98 Degrees are still touring. Kudos to them. Nice. Um, Nick Lachey is wonderful, but yeah. Nick um, Lachey is a solo guy, though. He Well, I mean, he went... Um, um, came back. Heard so. it. Need that tour money. <laughs> but yeah, it was hard to pick between Backstreet Boys and uh, One Direction, but... I just... Uh, 1D just doesn't have quite the harmonious talent. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, nor the dancing skills. I've seen you live, Niall. You can't dance, but I love you. All right. I have to poop. I have to I have to drop a deuce. Um, yes. But yeah. So let me go poop. I'll I'll be back later. Okay. Cool. Um, I'll try to occupy the mic. I guess uh, while Dakota's in the bathroom, we'll just go to commercial break. This summer, an all new series comes to the Mammal Music Network. What would happen if you took three singers, each from some of the best-selling pop acts of all time, and put them in a house together? Tune in and see when Nick Lachey from 98 Degrees, yeah, 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 yeah. Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Nick Jonas from Jonas Brothers, <laughs> all have to live in a hillside cabin with no phones, no internet, and no contact with the outside world. Our art. Are they going to have food? Yes, we will feed them. We're not cruel. And, and, and can they bring clothes? H- how about running water? Yes, yes, all of that. They just can't really do anything online, but all other amenities, duh. Anyway, they will have to tolerate each other for 30 days straight. With a fully equipped studio, the three have to try to come up with a hit song to pitch to their producers. Hey, stop eating all the Oreos, Jonas. Well, well, I guess I should respect my elderly home. Yeah, how did you enjoy the one year that you guys were relevant? Nick, just stop touching the thermostat. I, I, I was on the same label as Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. I can do what I want. We're all burning up. Seriously, what's the thermostat on? 98 degrees. Oh, no. Laughs, tears, fights, and a whole lot of hair gel. The Nick of Time, series premiere on April 1st, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, welcome back. You're not Dakota. Hello. Wait. Are you Harry Styles? That would be me. It's what my driver's license says. Prove it. I don't feel like it right now. How can I help you? Okay. Well, um, I know uh, Dakota had asked you to come and uh, talk on her show. Uh, There's a lot of pictures of me hanging in a grown man's room. I'm very uncomfortable. He's a big fan. Uh, but you don't have to worry because I'm not. You know, we can just talk as as men. As two souls. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, but since you're here, I'd love to uh, just go ahead and knock out that interview for you. And then, you know... I mean, what what are we... What are we on? Oh, this is our... Uh, this is a podcast called Awkward Mammals. Uh, it gets published on YouTube. Awkward Mammals. Yeah, we'd love to have... Uh, like, like a chinchilla. Yeah. Yeah. I love chinchillas. I'll do it. Sounds good. Welcome to the team. Uh, okay. Uh, so, first question for you, Harry. Uh, if I gave you an elephant, where would you hide it? I would hide it at Home Depot in the lumber section. So that way, when the guys walk around to cut the wood, they would see an elephant and be like, wow, that's an elephant in the lumber section. I think it'd be really good. I could train him to sing, and then he could sing like Night Changes. While he's over there, I'm gonna drink his water. Yeah, sure, I don't care. Uh, What's your favorite color socks to wear? I don't wear socks, particularly on stage. Um, My, actually it's probably something I need to have checked out. I have an ingrown toenail that smells a lot like leather, but I just wear straight shoes. But if I did wear socks, they'd be turquoise. I like turquoise. I like turquoise. It's like, good. Turquoise is good. I like aqua marine also. Um, if you were a biscuit, which would you be? What do you mean? Like what kind of biscuit? Well, I figured I'd cater to, you know, English, you know, biscuit. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. If I were a biscuit, I'd be probably a ham and cheese biscuit. Something savory and sweet, just like my music. Because my goal is to be like Elton John meets Ozzy Osbourne. That's who I try to model myself after, with a little bit of Queen Latifah, but that's neither here nor there. 
Okay, well, thanks for that little uh, tidbit. You're welcome. Um, what's your favorite place to eat? Oh, McDonald's. I I don't know how, but I had a feeling you were going to say McDonald's. I'm loving it. Name one act uh, actress you would love to get naughty with. Um. Well, I've already gotten naughty with Taylor Swift before. We dated, and she's an actress. She acted like she was a good musician, so... Um, but other than that, I'd have to say somebody from, from the homeland, Kira Knightley, maybe. Um, Natalie Portman, she's British, right? Uh, I think she's American. Okay, let's say, okay, let's just stick with Kira Knightley or Judy Dench, some, someone from home. That'll work. That we, could, we could have ham and cheese biscuits afterwards. Nice. Uh, do you suffer from sleepwalking at all? I suffer from um, sleep cooking. I make omelets at 3 a.m. for no reason. And I eat them because they're delicious. And you're just totally asleep and zonked out. I'm totally asleep and zonked out. And then I wake up and at 8 a.m. and lo and behold, there's an omelet. You've already had breakfast. I, two birds, one stone, mate. For sure. Did you ever do drugs? Um, I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to also. So mostly just... Um, the Alaskan Thunderfoot, a little bit of Mary Jane, and meth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, were you ever bullied as a kid? I was picked on here and there. I got told I looked like a girl. Um, that caused me a bit of confusion. That's why I worked at a bakery for a long time. Hmm. Making making buns and and long johns and what have you. So a little bit, but I mean I'm rich and famous now. So, mm-hmm. ha. What's your favorite daily wear? Attire. Uh, crushed velvet jumper. Paisley, of course. Is that like a rompin? Uh, somewhat like a rompin, but with longer longer pant legs that flare out at the bottom. Oh, like but it's like a combination of a rompum and bell bottoms. It looks it looks like like Hugh Hefner's like or like a seventies jumpsuit. Exactly, exactly a okay. seventies jumpsuit with lace inside. So only I know. Is it comfortable? It's very. I sleep in it. Right on. Who, according to you, is the best dressed man in Hollywood? That's a tough one. Probably Caitlyn Jenner. And uh, worst woman dressed in Hollywood? Probably Caitlyn Jenner. Okay, I can get behind that. Tell us something about your new film, Harry. Well, the new film is called Dunkirk, and for those of you who don't know, it's um, based off the life of Pablo Picasso when he fought in World War One, And when he was painting on the ships, he... Um, the torpedoes would hit, and he would actually use the blood of um, his fellow comrades to make to make art. It's pretty good. I think it's up for a Golden Globe and, and an Emmy. I plan to win both. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Best of luck to you. Let's see. Well, I think really that's about all the questions that we have for today. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time, Harry. Um, I guess I'll never see you again, and you'll get to continue living your life in... Not in person, no. No, not in person. Not in person, no. No, I'll never... No. Okay. It's been good. Yeah. Zane still sucks. Just gotta take this. It's not right for Leo. All right. And my face is on it. I mean, okay, well, he bought it. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Harry Styles. My Atlanta. I was backed up like 75 on spring break. <sighs> Goodness. <laughs> <sighs> well, um, did you hear anything while you were in there? I could not hear anything over the over the over the pushing. I apologize. What'd you do? Did you break something? Well, I had to go to the bathroom, too. I'm kidding. No. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, Harry...
Harry Styles walked right on in, and I mean, I guess I had totally forgotten that Harry was, Styles. I totally forgot. walked in here. I mean, I remember that you had booked him, and I totally forgot. And so I was like, "Oh, you're here. Oh, okay, well, let's just go ahead and crack this." Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. I booked him for ten minutes, and I pooped for eleven. I was. I know you missed uh, the interview and stuff, but um, I got him. I got Harry Styles to sing. On uh, on awkward mouth. Oh, nice! Yeah, nice. Yeah. I'm surprised I didn't hear that at all. Yeah, I know, and you know, I, I was actually surprised by how good he was. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'll hand it to him. He does have good, he does have uh, talent. Do uh, you wanna you want me to play it for you? Absolutely. Let's hear it. Okay. I got a fire for a heart. I'm not scared of the dark. You never seen it look so easy. I got a river for a soul. Baby, you're a boat. Baby, uh, you're a boat. Uh, what the bloody hell is that? I was trying to harmonize. You sound like a walrus on its period. Please don't ever, and don't ever make me sit through that again. Still better than Zane. You don't have to be okay. Well, I mean, you don't have to be rude about it, but okay, you know, fine. I I, I won't sing around you again. That's that's cool. So what do you think? That's what you sound like singing. I don't think I've ever heard you sing. Yeah. Thank God. Harry, Harry's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. now that I've heard myself sing. Yeah. 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 I'll never open yeah. my mouth again. No. I'm, I don't want to. I'm not Starting sure. now. I'm not sure how I feel about this podcast anymore. Well, anyway, what's uh, what's our takeaway from today's episode, Ben? I think I'm going to uh, hire a singing tutor. Okay. Okay. Um, I think for me the takeaway or not for me but for everyone of you listening um, if you like the music enjoy it don't let it be a guilty pleasure just let it be a pleasure actually yeah I um you know what boy bands are actually pretty cool yeah that's what my tramp stamp says so that's where I got that from <laughs> <laughs> there once was a boy from Nantucket <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, this has been another enjoyable uh, uh, episode of Awkward Mammals. Very much so. Very much so. I learned a lot, and I did not expect it. True, true. Well, let's uh, step into the awkward elevator to take us home. Hey. What's up? Pull my finger. What's it going to do? Just pull. What happened? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Oh. I recognize you. I've seen your poster uh, in the post office. You're wanted for finger pulling. You can't turn me in, man. I have a wife and kids. Hey, so so does John Travolta. This is how I make a living, but you know, I just gave, was you know I offer I'm offering free samples, you know, right now. I'm of what? Finger pulling. These nuts. Oh, okay. One leads to another, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So guy's got to make a living, but you know, you can't turn me in. I didn't even ask what floor are you going to. Oh, uh, seven. So, yeah, five it is. <sighs> I got dumped this morning. Oh. Hey, I miss him. Um, you can let me off here. Floor three it is. You ever wonder if, like, the elevator you're in, if if people have ever had a steamy makeout session in it? Um, I didn't before. You want to cause a steamy makeout session? I'm sorry, I'm on the rebound. This is tough for me. Never been through a breakup. You know, I um, we've dated since I was two. I'm not sure how to process it. I feel for you, man. Um, I also dated this uh, this uh, it since two since I was two. And we just also happened to go through a breakup, so I feel you. <laughs> I mean. It was her. It was a uh, hermaphrodite, and it didn't like. Uh, its name was Sam. He did. Uh, they didn't like being called a 
he or she. No, right. It's yeah. a it, you know. Hey. It, he, he owned it, you know, I, I really admired that about him. It. Hermaphrodites are people too. I I I heard if a hermaphrodite goes missing, they uh, put the picture on a carton of half and half. I'm just gonna practice my uh, Rosetta Stone Vietnamese tapes, if that's okay with you. Um. Dong dong sing wa ga ya. Dong sing dong dong di di zu. Applebee's two for twenty. He got off at floor two.